All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and I am continuing this X32 versus M32 mixing console adventure. Um, two consoles from Behringer, um, a premium brand and a lower line brand from the same parent company, not unlike a Lexus versus Toyota, Infiniti versus Nissan perhaps even Nike versus Converse, where you have a company that makes a premium, more high dollar brand, and they also release a similar product uh, with a different brand and a lower brand, or the opposite. They, in this case, they release the X32, and then they release a premium version of the same console with some different hardware and some internal changes. There's a, a lot of uh, chatter out there about whether they're exactly the same in a different shell. They are not. There are differences between these consoles. There's difference in the output circuitry. There's difference in the input circuitry. Um, I had someone te um, write a message about NPN versus PMP transistors. And uh, I don't know exactly what I'm seeing, but on the scope, I definitely do see that when I distort the waveforms, the top of the waveform distorts on the Midas with a triangular shape to it and a flat bottom. And it is the inverse on the X32 Behringer. Um, differences in noise, input noise that I've measured and um, connectors, there's a myriad of differences. Uh, but the overall function is similar and for many applications they're interchangeable and the cost differential. All right, so today I mentioned something in a previous video about a little chirp, uh, like there's a little rat inside. And uh, I decided to explore that further because it's interesting. Um, I don't really know what's causing it. Maybe one of you all out there that's immersed in the digital world um, would know what this is and um, whether it's common to other consoles. I'll look at it. I am looking at testing a Allen and Heath QU16 as well as a Digico SD11, which we bought for Pearl Jam Tour. And it uh, looks like they're not gonna take it out. So it will be available for me in the near future to do some testing on. That should be fun and exciting. Um, Oh, for those of you who don't know me, you know, I get a lot of great comments. Awesome. I really, really enjoy the feedback that I get. And also every once in a while I get somebody that just, um, you know, just kind of throws a bomb in the room and leaves and, you know, you're stupid or you don't know what you're doing because you use uh, cheap gear to test. Or I use this gear to test because I want to test in a way that everyone can replicate very easily what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything mysterious. I'm using simple, inexpensive gear to test um, not that expensive of gear. Um, this is real world stuff. And um, yeah, you know, I don't know. I just, it's just kind of annoying to see people like the, with this like arrogance that um, they come in and um, assume they know a lot about what's going on without looking into the whole picture. And as you know, I'm one to kind of look behind the outside of something, dig deep into it, as I do with those comments. Um, but I do have some fun playing and pushing back every once in a while. All right, so let's get into this chirp thing. So I, I was noticing when I was moving faders in the background of music, or if I hit a scene, I just kind of heard this little uh, when I hit a mute, I'd hear it every once in a while. I, I decided I would ferret it out. I would dig out and find this nuance noise and um, see, if, see if I could dig it out and let's see what it sounds like. Isolate it. So what I did was um, I have a 10 hertz tone from this digital um, signal generator here. And it's creating that tone and it's showing up in the input number two on this um, M32. Now this happens on both the X32 and M32 for ease of uh, demonstration. I'm just gonna show it on the M32. So I've got a 10 Hertz tone coming in. The signal generator has got a bit of noise to it um, because it's not a very expensive one. Again, I'm using cheap gear um, and it's got a kind of a 
So I got a low pass filter on the mic preamp. That's not necessary. Before my other signal generator died, I didn't need it as much. Um, and with a pure sine wave, you wouldn't need it at all. Um, so I've got it low pass. So I'm just getting this nice pure 10 hertz tone. Then I'm coming out of that channel. I'm going to the group. And in the group, I am doing the opposite. I am high passing the signal and getting rid of that 10 hertz tone. Um, let's see if we can see that um, EQ. And I'm getting rid of the 10 hertz tone completely. So this makes sure it's pure on the front end and then it goes into the group and gets rid of the 10 hertz tone. So now I should be left with nothing, which I have zero metering right now. Silence on the output. But let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when I move the fader. And I'm recording here on the Tascam and And we can see it here on the console on the RTA. And we can see it on the scope here. Let's see. And if I hit display here on the scope, I can go to persist and turn on the hold. And you can see all that um, stuff that's showing up there. Um, I can put on one second persist. All right. Um, ding, ding, ding. Um, now, if we look at the uh, analyzer there, we can see that it's just over 6K, the console is telling me, and I show it to be about 6.7K um, when I did the calculation of the waveform on the scope there. Um, and look what happens when I mute. fun okay and you can hear that's much louder now if I turn down the channel mute the mute is no longer muting a signal and it's silent and if I move the subgroup fader which doesn't have any signal on it we don't get any noise and if I move the main fader that doesn't have any signal on it because the 10 Hertz signal is being filtered out before the fader because I have that EQ pre fader um, so this chirping only seems to happen when there's a signal on there, when it's affecting the signal. And the type of signal, if I change that to a 20 hertz tone, let's go up to, uh, I'll go to 20 hertz, we can just start to hear it there. Um, it doesn't change the chirp. It stays the same. And if I go down to a 5, no matter what the signal is, it's just any signal there, um, if I go down to like 5 hertz, Let's see if we can see the signal. Yep. It's 8 hertz. Um, all right. So I guess it's a way of hearing our fader resolution steps. Let's go ahead and check them out. Oh, that sound here? That sound from my uh, generator there. Ignore that. There's your encoder resolution. Um, cool. The, um, yeah, if anybody knows uh, what uh, causes that, or if all boards, when I get to the Allen & Heath console and the SD11, I will look for that. Um, you know, it's very low level. Um, I did notice it, though, while I was messing with the board. So it's not such a low level that it's inaudible and cannot be heard. It's hard to hear and not maybe a big part of it but it's definitely there enough for me to notice it and look for it. Um, and um, cool, just looking for fun stuff to find and getting super nerdy in the sound world here. Um, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up and um, ponder trying to get these summing buses to um, see if I can find a way to hear any um, impact of putting lots of channels into a summing bus. I have had no success yet, so we may or may not see a video on that. Cool, cool. Thanks for joining. And if you want to see videos sooner, um, 
and uh, not wait. A lot of times I'll put a video out and someone says you should do a video on this and I'm already eight videos ahead on the member side or 10 videos farther down the road there. So I've already done them and they're already up um, on the member side. I'm already on to new stuff. If you're on the public side or just wait for the public side to come up either way. Thank you for joining.